let's look a little bit more closely at these inherited colon cancers. As I mentioned, there are two very common syndromes. One is called Lynch syndrome, occupying about two to five percent of the colorectal cancers. Its prevalence is about two to two into two thousand in populations, and familial adenomatous polyposis, which is about less than one percent of those patients with colorectal cancer. Now, these are inherited in an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern, and I'll just explain what that means. Essentially, if you have a mother and a father, um, and you are looking now at the offspring with an autosomal dominant inheritance, there is a 50% chance that a child will get the gene, the colorectal cancer gene, um, in an autosomal dominant inheritance. So essentially, it's like a flip of a coin um, that if your mother or your father, each individual child from those parents has a 50% chance of getting that gen genetic mutation. And that is involved in both HMPCC or Lynch syndrome and FAP. So in patients with Lynch syndrome or HMPCC, we are able to actually do serological or blood testing in these patients to see if they carry that abnormal mutation. In Lynch syndrome, the mutation is in something known as the DNA repair genes which leads to an accumulation of multiple mutations, which over time can lead to malignancy. And in FAP, the mutation is in something called the tumor suppressor genes on the FAP gene itself, which causes an increased risk in cell proliferation and a decrease in cell death. Let's talk a little bit more about Lynch syndrome. It is something that's really genetically very heterogeneous. There are five different abnormalities and genes that can happen that can lead to Lynch syndrome. These are on something known as the mismatch repair genes or the MMR genes. And the five most common ones are MLH1, MSH2, MSH6, PMS1, and PMS2. But by far, the MSH2 mutation is the most common. These have a very high penetrance if a mutation is found. And what these are characterized are by an early onset of sporadic cancer, a much more aggressive type of cancer. These are typically in the proximal right side of the colon, and these patients are at enormous risk for extracolonic tumors, um, and they have a very distinct type of tumor pathology, which has a Crohn's-like type of mucinous quality to the pathology. As I mentioned, we are actually able at this time to do blood testing on patients to see if they have this specific mutation and see if they are at increased risk for colorectal cancer related to this germline mutation in their DNA. When we're looking at a patient that we think may have Lynch syndrome, there's something called a 3 to one rule, which is there are three relatives with an HMPCC or a Lynch type cancer. They're in two successive generations and there's typically one patient who's below the age of 50 at presentation. Now when we look at the pedigree that I'm showing on here, um, on this slide, you can see here that there are three generations of family members here. The affected patients are the ones that are yellowed out. And in the grandfather, you can see that he developed colorectal cancer at the age of 47. His son developed two colorectal cancers at the age of 42 and then a second colorectal cancer at the age of 51. And then another child developed colorectal cancer at the 53 and one of the granddaughters developed endometrial cancer. So when you look at a family history like this, it screams at you that there might be a hereditary cancer at play. And in 2011, what we're capable of doing is actually doing testing of the blood of these affected uh, patients and even their offspring to see if they have the Lynch mutation. So patients with Lynch syndrome are at increased risk for multiple other cancers in addition to colon cancer. And in comparison to the general population, we can look at these different cancers themselves. 
They include, as we mentioned, obviously colon cancer. But women are particularly at increased risk for endometrial cancer. In fact, women with Lynch syndrome may develop only gynecological cancers. This obviously can go under the radar screen for a physician, and we must have an increased scrutiny when we see a patient that has a young endometrial cancer to specifically ask about additional cancers in the family, such as colon cancer. They may, act, they may also be at increased risk for stomach cancer, ovarian cancer, hepatobiliary tract cancer, uterine cancer, small bowel cancer, and brain cancer. When you look at the risk of these type of cancers in someone with HMPCC in comparison to general population, look at the difference between colon cancer to HMPCC. By the age of 50, in the general population, the risk would be, let's say, 7% for colon cancer. In someone who has HMPCC or Lynch syndrome, the risk could approach almost 80%. So it's markedly different in this type of population. Moving on to patients who have familial adenomatous polyposis, this too is a genetic syndrome which is autosomal dominant inheritance. This on the other hand though is characterized by a very early, early onset of hundreds to thousands of polyps that patients may develop in their colon. And obviously, just because of the vast majority of polyps that develop, they're at nearly 100% chance of developing colon cancer over the lifetime. And every single one of these patients require actually having a total colectomy to protect them from the development of colon cancer. There may actually also be a variant of this type of colon cancer, it's known as attenuated FAP. They may develop the polyps a little bit later in life and they may have less than hundreds of thousands of polyps, but certainly they're also at significantly increased risk for colorectal cancer. And here we can see um, the average age of development of polyps is significantly earlier than one would ever expect, and that's by the age of 15. The range can even start at the age of seven when they start developing polyps. And the average age of development of colon cancer is typically within the 50, within the 30s and 40s. And here you can see by the age of 45, 85% of individuals have already developed colon cancer, necessitating uh, the need for actually taking out uh, the colon in all these patients. Um, like I said, 50 to 90% develop small bowel polyps, but they also may be at increased risk of development of gastric polyps, as well as other types of soft tissue tumors within the abdomen known as desmoid tumors.